<laughs> but let's try to have a good title Tuesday. Crash some foes, sack some pieces, play some nice positional ideas, and just get a massive score. Can we get to eight points again? The first game, always a bit of a test. Uh, it takes a little bit to get warmed up, but luckily I've got my favourite opening, the classical Dutch. So we're going to just play my normal stuff, and you should know by now that this is the setup I go for, and I'm aiming to play e5. Now knight e4 is the main move, but I'm going to go a5. This is the move I used to always play to stop b4 and to get a little hold on the b4 square so my knight can often come into that square. And now this is a really sharp line. And this is why I gave up this variation, rook e1, uh, with the idea of queen c2. Now I'm going to play a bit of a dubious idea. This I know is good for white. Um, it was actually played by Spassky, this e5 idea. I don't know who against, but his opponent played g4. But with modern computers, it's found that d takes e5 is actually pretty good for white here. And I analysed this even before computers were strong. I think I analysed this like 30 years ago with my dad. And we couldn't find a very good line for black. But it's really tricky for white. And as this is a blitz game... Um, our opponent can go wrong. Now this is a mistake. Pawn takes pawn is the best move because now we can go here. And I've had this a couple of times before and go here. And this helps us win our pawn back because d4 is now um, a pawn we can just capture. And we should be doing all right now. Uh, okay, so any, anything clever I can do here? Nope, so we bring the knight back. And just an interesting position. This pawn is quite useful. My opponent's got some discombobulated bits over there. But maybe his pawns can be quite good coming down the middle of the board. So I'd prefer to be black. Right, what next? Now, we could try to get the queen over here. But he's going to kick my bishop away then. So um, I could also go just here. Get a bit of a clamp on the position. Um, do we go here anyway? But after this move, I don't know. I don't like getting... Okay, I'm going to go here. And this at least stops h3 and allows my bishop to come uh, to that square. Uh, my opponent should probably do something like queen here. Okay, he's played that. And maybe try to move this pawn and play bishop here. I'm trying to think of a plan here. It's not actually easy to see what I should be doing in this position. Should I get the bishops off? Don't see how that helps. Should I put the bishop here? Should I even play g5? Oh, g5 looks like a lot of fun. This is probably a, a shit move, but at least it tries to do a bit of damage to these pawns. These pawns are very strong, and I want to get the e5 square for my piece. So I want to attack this pawn and try to get the e5 square. So my opponent's played just a very sensible move there, bastard. Okay, we'll take here, and I expect he's going to develop his bishop. And I'm actually not sure about my position. Do I then take and come knight e5, maybe? And this way I'm hoping I have the G file, but this is a bit of a problem. I don't really want to swap off this one. So I could go bishop here, pawn here, takes, takes, move the bishop back. That looks all right. Maybe there's something more dynamic, like king h8 and rook g8 here. That would make a lot of sense as well. Just get my, get my rook on that file. Very interesting position. That's the good thing about the classical Dutch, right? You get very interesting position and now I'm going to go for this rook g8 idea I don't really care what happens on the queen side I could have gone a5 there but should we play that now okay we'll play this now because it stops b4 because I take on pass on and that would have been a little bit annoying and now we are going to have a battle on the g file this is the move which I always have to keep an eye on maybe I've even got bishop f5 then though if he pushes that pawn and I guess I'm going to be trying something with bishop h3 at some point. But it's very even at this moment in time. Do I even double up rooks? Could go for that plan as well. We could do the El swing and rooney Oh, yes. No, let's 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 bring some more firepower in. But I, I, I'm a little bit worried about this pawn coming forwards if I move there. This move doesn't seem to do anything. So I'm just going to bring one more piece in. And that's directly aimed at e5, because then I have one, two, three, four pieces aimed at that square. And he only has three defending it. And this last move is a 
quite a logical move, but I don't really see what he's doing next. So I'm just going to play a useful move here. And maybe now, okay, so now he's preparing this move again. Um, I mean, it's not the end of the world by any means, but... Okay, what about I put the rook here? Because then my bishop still has this square. And if he goes f5, he gives up the e5 square. Tense game, no? I just feel before I pull the trigger on the king side, I might want... Okay, so now I can even come back here. But I've got the e5 square, so I'm quite happy, I think. Which way do we go? Do we go here? Allow his bishop in? Well, maybe all the way back, So I, because that move would have been annoying anyway. And now I definitely want to play here, but then queen takes here. So we could come with the Dutch plan now of bringing the queen over, because my queen is now blocked off by the pawn. And the queen will only increase firepower there. Let's keep this as an option, knight e5. Maybe I can play knight e5 next move, but in we go, straight away, the queen coming in. Good move for my opponent. And do we now have to come in with this one? My bishop's a little bit problematic, isn't it? Bishop here as well. Takes maybe this one. It's getting very... Okay, I'm just going to have to move now. Let's, let's shut up and move. Let it all out. Oh, shit. Did I just blunder a piece? Oh, fuck. Oh, he's got... Oh, God. I just blundered a piece there. Literally just blundered but it's a sacrifice to peace did i say i blundered I, I don't blunder i'm a grandmaster oh has he got this oh he's got that he's got that he's got that move he didn't see it this move is still tricky this is a wild wild game my back rank fuck how do I... What is... I think I'm winning this king and pawn ending. Because he can't stop both of my pawns. Whoa! Spicy shit. <coughs> With shit being maybe the, imp the more important word there. Um, I do like a foul. This is a very English meal to get, a bit of a foul meal. Um, but let's have a look. What, what do we reckon the game review is going to be there? Do we reckon... Uh, I, I don't reckon it'll be very high, but that was, quite a, that was quite a tasty, exciting game to get us started off with. And, okay, so it was like 87. Uh, that, that's, that, I'll take that. I'll take that. That's not too shabby. And as you can see, I'm always kind of doing all right. Okay, there were some moments here, but the computer never understands the Dutch never understands the Dutch, where I may be doing a little bit badly. We're around right about here. Yeah, so this is where if he grabs the pawn on e4, and, and I can I can show you this line, which basically refutes it if you if you want to see it. This is the variation that made me give up uh, this a5 move. And what my opponent should have done, we're just going to have a look at it on this board, and before computers you could play like this, but I lost, I lost the game to James Plaskett, at the British Championships in this. And it was quite funny, actually, because I was, I got to a position where I was three pawns down in the ending against Grandmaster James Plaskett in this variation. And I think I was 18 at the time. I was a bit of a, bit of a misspent youth. And I decided in the ending, I'm, I'm, it's the British Championships, I'm just going to go and get a beer because I'm going to lose this ending. There's only us playing and one other, one other, like, you know, table out of 200 and I thought look I'm going to lose this game I'm three pawns down the ending against the Grandmaster I can't really resign yet I feel like a beer so I went and got a beer and I took it to my board and my opponent complained that I was drinking beer at the board uh, probably quite rightly actually um, so I had to down my pint and then resign bastard but the the refutation of this line is uh, and I'll, sh uh, I'll show you it just got to go back to it uh is if, and this is why you can't play this in long play, but in Blitz you can play more risky stuff, is this move. This move is, is the real problem. And now after bishop f5, bishop queen takes here. And rook b8, queen here. And I've never really trusted knight c2, which maybe is actually not as bad as I thought because my opponent has loads of compensation for the exchange. Okay, well, we're in with the second round. Let's see if we can... I mean, I always get, like, to two out of three, right? 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna ha- try and do better than that. And I'm playing a uh, well. Who knows? When they're Indian, they're dangerous. They could be. They're only tw- he's only twenty three twelve, but he could be like I don't know the next the next Gukesh or something. And I'm playing the Raptor ah, ah, variation of the Tromposki. And I really like this line. My opponent could grab that pawn at some point. I don't care. Have the bloody pawn. Because we are going to raptor him up. Um, <laughs> what was I doing there? Don't make me say that again. And I, I did release a course on this on Ginger GM with my friend Richard Palliser. And if I had a good memory, I'd know what to do now. I, I know like E4 is a move, but this is interesting. This is a move we give in the course to discombobulate. And I want to try and come over and take that pawn. And of course, you can buy that. It's a bloody bargain. It's like five hours of me. Actually, maybe not a bargain. You have to see my face for about thirty pounds, and you will learn everything to do with this amazing opening. Go and buy it. Got to get the sales pitch in. As you may know, I'm poor now, <laughs> and um, Bishop will try to come here and grab that pawn. So we did actually look at this position, um, and it, again, pawns. Who gives a damn about pawns? We don't need them. We don't need them. We don't need the little guys. Hey, pawns, go away. I don't know what I'm singing there. Okay, what what do we tell? I, I don't know how this goes now. Do we flick in a rook? Yeah, we don't want pawns. Have another one. I don't like pawns. Have them. Have more pawns. If it makes you happy, if you feel good, grab it. Yeah, okay. You've had you've had a fair few now. Now, can we do anything naughty to his queen bishop here? No. This pawn I like. This pawn I don't want to willy nilly away. Okay, let's take that. Why didn't I take that last move? And now... Feels like I've done something a little bit wrong here, but okay. Let's develop a piece. I, I, here he goes d5, which is a bit annoying. Okay. I really don't... I really want to get my bishop here. Okay, so maybe this move... We don't care about pawns. I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking, why do I give so many bloody pawns away? So I want to go here, and I want to avoid d5. I can't do that because it's pinned. I saw that. Just testing. Yeah, I mean, I clearly haven't managed to get enough compensation here, have I? But I've got good development. Pats are a check. But I shouldn't have allowed his queen to come back. That's a stupid move. And I might have to castle here because I don't think this is going anywhere. Because I think the e file is more important. But something like d4, and I'm not really liking this at all. Now I'm going to start counting the pawns. And Okay, it's only two pawns. Two pawns is nothing. It's nothing. And let's let's now pin that one. I, I think he should have closed the middle. Why on earth did he open up the middle of the board? Because his king is quite risky. If he castles bishop c4, if he castles this way, I'll take that one and take the bishop. So his king is now trapped in the middle. And, and you know, you've got to be careful with your king, Sonny Jim. Or I'll point my finger right at you. And uh, I think I got compensation now. I don't know if it's enough, but I don't care. I'm attacking. That's what we like. Maybe bishop c4 next and then take here. Maybe queen e2 with some frets here. It's a little bit tricky for him, right? What does he do with the king? Can he... Okay, so he comes in. Now, do we get rid of that one? And then think about what to do? Or do we take here first? Or do we go bishop... Bloody decisions, aren't they? Bishop c4 is also tempting, isn't it? So we can't castle. Hmm. Uh, okay, I'm going to go he here. But then he takes there. And if knight takes, he takes the queen. Let's get rid of this knight, because then I can... I don't have to decide what to do yet, then. Lazy move. So I've got maybe just a very simple plan of queen to e2. That might just be a very good move because this bishop is really tied down now. So what if I do play queen e2? If he castles, I should take there, but then he can take my knight. I think this should be good. Now he can castle, but then I maybe have check. Or I can take there, he takes there, but then he's on f2. So he castles... Well, maybe I go check and knight b3 and then queen takes e7. That's probably the way to do it. Castles. I mean, he might be able to castle this way. 
And then something like Bishop A6, because it looks cool. And sometimes we just have to thing do things that look cool, even if they're shit. <laughs> I don't know. I've got good play. It's only two pawns, isn't it? Yeah, it's only two pawns. Come on. This is this is good fun. Okay, I should be okay here. So I'm hoping I can now check and play this move because this one is the threat. But I don't want him taking my knight. So he's coming into f2. Shit. Okay. Well, we have to do it. Mm, looks a bit scary, doesn't it? Ah. I miss this move. Miss this move. Otherwise, I would have uh, been a lot more cautious. I'm stopping him getting a draw, but he gets a lot of play now. I have to come here. Now he goes here, and I resign. Fuck! Ah, oh, bollocks! Will he see rook f5? He does. And I'm losing. That was really bad calculation by me there. I'm doing it again. I can't get to. I can't get to a good score out, out the start. Why? Why can't I get to a good score? Ridiculous. Very bad play from me. Very bad play. Um, and, well, I'm playing on because his time is low. But I'm now wishing I hadn't given up so many pawns. <laughs> okay, do we go here? Okay, my bishop is strong. Some some more chances now. We we'll play for the win, obviously, even though we're completely losing. And he's got to win this now. He's got to win this position, which he probably will do now. But he's making a bit of a hash of it, right? doing ay 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 very bad play from me last trick if he takes that one I resign mm, that was bad game man that was a disappointing game very disappointing because I'm doing all right and I just winning there and then uh, and then just uh, miss this queen f6 move which yeah oh, okay oh well okay let's just have a look at it again so this is clearly I'm doing well but after this one queen c4 is the way to do it that's much better my normal loser game early on but queen c4 check much better move. That just wins the piece on e7. I thought this was winning, but I missed his queen can keep on this square. And actually now, uh, it's not better anymore because all of a sudden this is just too strong, yeah? And in, the thing is, in these very complex situations, it's very easy to make a mistake. And the second move I missed was this rook, F, rook here. He's also got rook f4, and of course I'm losing here. This is the problem when you play sharp chess. You, you, you can't afford to make one little mistake. Well, big mistake, which you can't in chess anyway. But did I have anything even easier there? Because around about here, he should definitely go d4. But he plays here. And now, well, this just looks really good for me. Knight takes d4 as the top choice. Keep it simple. And here, this is a hard move to see. But rook e4 and queen e2 looks now quite logical. Because I want, yeah, I want my queen on e2, and I want my rook to take here, so that would be much better. But this is also very strong, and I just missed queen c4 now. This would have been the killer move. Had I played this, it's quite an easy win, because I'm going to get the queens off and take that one next move. And even at the end there, he played, he played, he played, he played, uh, he didn't play very well. 
probably had to get his um, you know, accuracy down so he didn't get accused of cheating and do one of these cheat calls that I'm now sitting in. How can they think I'm cheating? How many times are they going to get me to do this cheat call? I'm moaning now because I lost, all right? I don't mean it. It's just because I lost. It's very good that they do the cheat calls. It's a good initiative. Well done, chess.com. But please, just let me chill out in future. And, um, uh, yeah, okay, well, let's let's go to the end. And I, I kind of, around about here, was getting a bit optimistic. But, of course, I'm clearly losing at this point as well. Because uh, he's got a lot of pawns coming down the board. And, well, what else can I do? This rook is very nicely placed for him. It kind of covers everything. There's not really any tricks I can go for. And, yeah, this pawn is just coming down and queening. I should try to queen my pawn. That would be the best bet. But he seems to be a lot quicker there. And rooks are much better than bishops at stopping them. And this move is obviously terrible because his king always has this square here. I, I was dreaming of some checkmate idea. But the problem with moving my rook there is that I lose control of g5. So, come on, let's do better now. Let's do better. That was a disappointing loss, so we're gonna have to do better. And I want to get, I want to get to four out of five. So I want to win the next three. We've had our warm up. There's no more excuses. Let's um, try to rock and roll with some wins. Some good wins, better wins. And we're playing a CM Silver Swords. And let's just try to play a little bit more confidently and maybe take my time in critical moments because I just missed that queen f6. One move miss. Come on, Silver Swords. Play a game. I do want to play you now because I'm uh, Brian. Brian Z. Because I, I, I want to play, yeah? I do actually want to play this game. I mean, I, sometimes I'm like, okay, if my opponent times out, I'll take another point. Who cares, yeah? But now that I've had my warm-up, I want to... You get a little roll going, and I think that's really important when you're playing blitz chess. You want to play to get the the mind just the mind's my, my mind. It's a bit like my body. It's all my body's all cranky now, and I'm all I'm all old and cranky, and uh, it, it needs like a bit of a warm up before it gets going. Yeah, uh, and it's the same with the mind. So come on, silver swords, play a move, please. Um, and he's not playing a move. Uh, CM. Uh, so many CMs around now. Uh, I might as well just have my cup of tea, right? So we might just win this one on time, but I'd much rather have a... Uh, much rather get a game in. What should I talk about? I mean, I might as well talk about shit, I suppose. Uh, well, candidates, that's a natural thing. Um, actually, I, I, do, I, I did get in my past quite regularly... Um, asked if I want to go on podcasts and you know I, I have to I have to say aren't there so many bloody chess podcasts around and, and there's nothing against the people that do the podcast the little lovely guys but I mean chess podcasts they're not that they're not that exciting I mean I could be listening to a podcast about aliens you know about improving my health about the latest developments in AI but no, there's about 10 different podcasts I could listen to about, you know, chess. And I have to say, I mean, why are there so many podcasts out there in chess? It's a bit over overkill, isn't it? Don't know why I brought that up in relation to the candidates, because I feel like I'm doing a podcast, because what am I doing? I'm just chatting to you guys. How much fun can that be? I'd rather be talking about aliens. Maybe we can do that another day. Um, and... Um, well, maybe not. But the candidates, well, I, I mean, who have I been impressed with? Well, very impressed with Nepo. And now my opponent plays a move. Okay. He's going to have to be bloody quick. What should we do against him? What should we do? Okay. I'll, I'll talk about that after this one. I think we're going to do the black line. Should we? Let's do the black line. Let's black line him up. He's going to have to be quick. If I lose this, I'm going to say it will be quite embarrassing. But... I think I've lost the ability to be embarrassed. As you get older in life, it doesn't matter so much. And I'm playing the black line, and I'm going to go g5 and try and kill. Because it's a lot of fun, this variation. Okay, so now he's 
gonna try and open me up over here. But let's let's just go on the king side. Let's do the most fun variation. As in, let's keep attacking. Well, we can bring. Okay, let's go here and attack on the king side. I'm trying to do the standard, the standard attack in the black line. Um, now, let's get knight to f4 because that looks like a good square for a knight. And I was thinking about going queen here, so I had queen here. Maybe maybe that was option. Do I have anything flash here? I can't see it, so we'll take that one. Let's try to bring the queen over to the king side to attack. And now we come... Do we come in? No, let's go here first because this will probe some weaknesses. And now I'm really thinking about... I don't need that bishop. We're going to kill. Okay, fuck it. I have my bishop. Because we are going to try and checkmate you as quickly as we bloody well can. And boom! That's what you get in the black line. That was quite smooth. That was quite fun. Even though he had 20 seconds left. That was like... That was like... If you want to learn the black line, well, that is like postcard stuff. Put that on your black line postcard. Pin it up with your wall next to that poster of me. Which someone... Some people... Have, not some people. One person did once tell, you, tell me that they had a poster of me in their bedroom. Didn't even realise I had any posters of me. That was fucking weird. Um, please don't do that because it's a little bit odd. I mean, you know, posters of anyone, a little bit preteen, but a poster of me, very strange. Very strange, considering he was about 50 years old. Even stranger. Uh, God knows what he was doing. Mm, oh, God. Okay, anyway, that, that was nice. A candidate. So I was talking about a candidate. Let's do a little game review. It, we, we won't get a high rating there because um, the the computer thinks black line is dodgy. But that was a lot of fun, right? That, that was kind of sex on legs, that game. And we're talking about the candidates. Well, Nepo playing playing very well. Um, must be a favourite now. So calm. Mental state, brilliant. Um, Carawan has been disappointing, hasn't he? I'm dis you know, I've, I feel for Carawan because... If Magnus wasn't around, he would have been world champion. He kind of feels like, you know, it's like right for him to be world champion. But right things don't happen in life. Always, unfortunately. Maybe in the next life they do. That's what I'm banking on. And, um, uh, you know, then we have Gukesh. Amazing talent. Also very good mental state. Been extremely impressed with him. I put a bet on Gukesh today. I've basically bet on every single player now. So whatever happens, I will win money. It's the way I look at it. If you bet on all the players, then you'll win money, won't you? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, uh, I think I've got him at four, five to one. Seem like good odds to me. And um, then there is uh, Prague, who I, I got at like 16 to one. Uh, and I think he could still win it. There's Hikaru. Hikaru, would he be best for chess if Hikaru won it and became world champion? Because he's got such a big following maybe i mean he's clearly good enough to win it this this year people must really be excited because ding's not looking great i would love to see ding come back to his best but what is going on with ding i feel sorry for the guy you know he's a brilliant chess player well deserving to be world champion but he just doesn't seem like he's enjoying it right and uh you know i, I it's sad to see that there's something going on and I, I you know we don't have to you know delve too deep into it but um, I just hope he gets back to his best thing. So whoever wins the candidates, I think, must be favourite to win the World Championship. So it's a really big thing to offer. Who other, which other players have I missed out? Ali Razor needs to get some new shoes, clearly. Very exciting player, brilliant player, but not quite stable enough in this one. Um, Vidit, his games have been brilliant to watch. Uh, Vidit, I mean, what a... What a player to watch. Really exciting stuff. And he's been one of my favourite players in the tournament. And I'd like to see him. I mean, I don't I mean, I don't think he's be, be I mean him being world champion just feels a bit weird to me. I'll be honest, because he doesn't feel like he's strong enough. Be honest. Not yet. But he, he's bloody strong, but he's not he's not like Magnus Carson level. So I don't know, but the way he's playing chess is so much fun. And talk about the devil, and he will appear. And there he is at the top. And I'm not calling him the devil. I don't know him that well. 
There's the devil. That's the bloody devil, isn't it? Hans. Hans the man. I'm only joking. I, I, I'm, I'm warming to Hans. He's a character and we need more characters in life. Life is not... Life's about characters, isn't it? And he's a character. And uh, I, 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 you know, and, and he's got, he's got, he's got some, uh, he's got something about him, that lad. So, uh, and I want to see him do well. Polish fighter, Duda, always does well in this. Nihal Sarin, very strong. And we're on two out three. So I wanted to go, I've got to win the next two to kind of feel happy in my mind and um, to get, get to uh, a good score. And let's just have, see if there's any interesting games still going on. So Salem is uh, drawing. Okay, fair enough. This is actually quite an easy draw, funnily enough, uh, this one. Um, it's Rook and Bishop versus Rook, which is very hard to draw. I've, I think every time I've had the Rook and Bishop versus my opponent's Rook, including Grandmasters, I've won. And I've never had to defend it. I'd hate to defend it. It'd be, it'd be really horrible. And this one is winning for the queen, but it's with with um, right play actually quite hard. And I, I don't know why white's white needs to go here with a king. Where's that king going? Um, and it's a draw, so well defended there by the player of the black pieces because it's not an easy draw there. I lost this once to Grandmaster Gwen Jones um, in a London league match. Uh, we, I used to play in London for Team Hackney. You know, when I was about 18, I started playing for them. It was great fun. I got paid £50 a game. And I stayed at the uh, Pete Thompson, mate, well, the, the manager of Hackney's house. He used to pay me. Uh, and we would play the game of chess, in, normally in a pub. And then after the game, we would go out. And there was one pub, I don't know if it's still there, in Stoke Newington. Uh, and it's this is about 20 years ago. Stoke New London's so big, it's an area of Stoke Newington. Uh, if anyone is watching from that area, please let me know. And it was quite rough. And there was a pub there called the Jolly Butchers, and it was open till like 4 a.m. or something, or, or at least 2 a.m. And we used to go there and get quite wasted. And then we used to go to a pool place called Effie's. I think someone pulled a gun out of me there when I was, I don't know, that's another story, even though guns are not legal. It was it was crazy crazy days, but uh, now it's all gentrified, and all very nice there. Should we do should we do the black line again? Because that worked so damn well, didn't it? So damn well. And um, let's go for this e5 malarkey. So basically, if you want to learn the black line, stage one is this: you get a nice solid post there. Now this is a way that can be played but it allows my bishop to get to a more active square and it should be pretty comfortable for black i'm never sure if i should take this i don't really want that bishop coming there so i think i am very tempted though okay now now that his bishop can't come here i'm definitely taking that one now i could take there but i i, I feel like my king will, will disown me if i do that and now we should try quite probably to play against these Weaknesses, something like here. Um, the other way is to play very solid like this. But let, let's let's play here and just poke at that pawn. And maybe about even. He's got the two bishops, but I've got the structural damages to work upon. And I'm thinking I want to get my bishop out. So he, this is a very clever move because he wants me to take that pawn so his bishop becomes freer. So I'm now going to... I hope I get my queen trapped. Try really to give my bishop an option to move, but also get the bishop pair back. And if I do grab that pawn, which I might do, I'm attacking the bishop. I'd much rather be sacrificing than grabbing. And now let's do this, which seems like quite a useful pin on the knight. Where did my my other knight would be very nice over here? I feel. I'm always trying to think where my piece is the best place. And this knight could come in here, but of course there's the problem with this pawn. So maybe my next maneuver, I've got to watch my queen a little bit, right? He's going to try to come here, but then, then can I grab that one when he comes here? Mm, it's a bit scary, that. If I come here, his bishop, positionally I'm doing well, his bishop is now terrible, but it's just, I've got to be a little bit careful of tactics. I mean, 
Do I now come back? Maybe that's safest. Let's come back. Probably not best, but he has trapped his bishop. My knights are quite nice here. And now my idea is to come here. I suddenly get worried about this. Maybe I can come there. Here, okay. Now I might even take this one. Controversial. And I want to put my knight on this square. What's better, knights or bishops? I've always liked knights, actually. Because this bishop's bad. His dark square bishop's very nice. Yeah, and this is now this is now the key point. I think I put my knight here. Because I can guard that knight and eventually force his bishop away. Again, I'm playing a bit with fire, but that's the way I roll. And now definitely don't want that bishop there. And probably put my knight here. I want to get my knight to one of these two squares. This knight, very nice. You could have, this pawn was on pre in some of those lines, actually. So you could have taken, taken, taken that pawn. And that pawn's quite important, actually. So this move, I'm not, not liking so much. This one seems very strange. What am I doing with this pawn? Okay, my... Oh, mm, this, Suddenly not liking my rook move there. Do I have to give up the file? Okay, well, let's do it. And now... I don't want to lose this pawn. Might be grabbing this pawn again. So trying to force that bishop to come to a funny square. Okay. And now does my other knight come here, maybe? This is the piece I'm playing against, basically. Prestigic battle. And maybe here and try to get the rooks off at some point would be nice when my knights... I'm liking more. I was thinking about playing f6, but I didn't want to loosen my light squares, potentially making his light square bishop better on this diagonal at some moment. I mean, maybe he, he could have sacrificed it and get his bishop here. This is the kind of move he should consider. He should consider doing this to increase the range of his bishops, because bishops can, as, as I'm sure we're all aware, become phenomenally good. But this move I don't like, because it, it makes his bishop worse. Now my king, where's he coming in? Okay, I'm gonna go for this now, consolidating this, giving my king a route into center. I'd l I think I'd really like an ending now, because again, he's made his bishop pretty bad he's sitting and waiting not really a good choice always so I'm gonna because he's playing this strategy I'm gonna try and prove my position this move I was worried about but I thought I didn't see this move until a second ago Wow I, I thought because he was sitting and waiting you wouldn't play that move but my position was getting better and better uh, as the game is developing now if I get my pawn here, what would be my winning strategy? Well, at the right moment, I was going to play knight e6, but I was trying to make as much progress because I didn't think he was doing anything because of his moves. And by getting a grip on his dart squares, that would definitely help me for a number of reasons. Number one, I take away his pawn breaks, and then he'd have no pawn breaks. You look at all his pawns, they can't do anything. Number two, you want outposts for your knight. I would gain two more outposts on these two squares. Number three, his bishop would then be locked in forever. This is when I get my pawn here. And once I've improved my structure as much as possible, my next plan was to do some rerouting and to swap off pieces. So then I was going to move my knight to e6, mainly so that I could go rook to d8 and make mass exchanges here. And even if I got all of the major pieces off, it feels like I've got very good chances to win the ending. For example, my king has a route in to attack his pawns. And this bishop can't move, and this bishop is dead. My knights seem to dominate his bishops there. So, uh, yeah, this is a little bit risky, because as the computer says, he has a move like this. I, I, I was actually worried about f4, but as we saw, f4 was actually a terrible move in the end. Uh, okay, game review. Let's have a look. So we're on three out of four. I want to win the next one. Good, solid score by me there. Quite an even game. I think you can see from the graph that Maybe I start to outplay, get the better of the position here. And I only let it slip 
actually on that last move had he found h4 there was a couple of moments where I gave him some chances so what what were the moments there's one here where I play knight here and yeah I this is I realized this didn't I that he could play rook takes d8 and this pawn is on pre this would have been this would have been uh, actually I'm surprised I'm only minus one here because had he gone here I can't take the queen because he wins my knight and this is a really important pawn not just because he wins a pawn but he gets this square for his bishop and this would have been problematic I can try to hold this position because I've got a very nice blockade maybe this is not so bad ah he goes bishop g4 but hmm b6 would have been a very hard move to find he seems to have very good winning chances here so that that was that was the one one blunder there uh, in the position but all in all i think quite a quite an okay game quite even the opening uh, i think as soon as white releases the tension black should have no worries at all of equalizing and that's kind of what you want to do as black generally because look this bishop is trapped this bishop is not trapped so we don't have to put it on e7. We can now put it on a much more active square. And the, the pawn structure is symmetrical, so there's no reason I should be worse. If he wants, if white really wants to do this move, keeping things simpler, then why doesn't he play something like here first? Wait until I put the bishop here, and then take here. Wouldn't that be more logical? Because now, at least, my bishop is on a much more passive square. It's still okay for black. There's no worries here at all. But that would be more logical than the way my opponent played it. And all in all, I, I, I think quite a nice game. And at the end here, well, maybe I didn't need to start doing this. The only reason I did this is because of what my opponent's doing. He's doing this all the time. But maybe this knight e6 move straight away. Okay, let's put the king on f7 because it, it's actually quite nice here. It defends the queen. But maybe in this position now, knight here. And I, I, I was trying to get everything I could by using these pawns, but... This would have been the way to grind grind out um, the position. Get rid of his best piece, which I feel his best pieces is his control of the open file. So get rid of those pieces and then try to play the ending where my knights kind of dominate his bishops and he does have multiple pawn weaknesses as well. So this would have been uh, the correct way to grind, but I had this in, in mind the way I played it anyway. All right, if anyone's interested in tournament scores, we've got four rounds in. We're on three out of four. We seem to be playing a bit better now. So we, we've got the like test games out of the way. And um, uh, the standings, that's what I was trying to find. Four out of four. Well, Hans is still killing it. Vidit. So it must be a rest day in the candidates day because Hikaru, Vidit, and I saw uh, also Fabiano are playing in this. Can't, don't, can't. Don't, don't they want a bloody rest from chess? What's wrong with them, man? I mean, I can't understand Hikaru streaming because, he, you know, he's going to get... You know, that's his job, isn't it? Streaming. And he, he likes it. He's got phenomenal energy level it. But come on, vid it. Go, go, go and chill out, my friend. You know, the candidates is in Canada. Go, go and have a look at something in Canada. I'm sure you've got nice stuff in Canada. Every Canadian person I've met, very nice. And uh, who have I met? I've met I've met the uh, Bote sisters, both very very nice. Um, and I've met Eric and Aman, also really like them. Cool guys, cool girls. So go and enjoy it. You know, maybe maybe, maybe vid it. Go over to Eric's house, get on the shots, get some you know, get cracking with some you know, rave up, rave it up a little bit. Actually, yeah, play title Tuesday. What am I talking about? And I think I saw Fabiano here as well, somewhere on the list. So let's scroll down. I'd love to get a massive score today. I wonder if I can get a massive score. I know I've lost one game. Aronian on the same score as me. Ha 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 ha. I'd love to play Aronian. A real legend of the game, Aronian. Our tie break's quite bad. So even though we're on three out of four, probably going to be a bit further down. Oh, look, I'm on the same as Anish. I would love to beat Anish. That would be great. I'm sure he'd tweet about it. It seems like his hand is stuck to Twitter. And uh, here we are in the 115th. So, yeah, okay. It's an all right score 
at this moment in time. Yeah, so very, it's going to be very exciting next week to see who is potentially going to be the next world champion. I mean, who am I going for? Well, Nepo looks so good, but Gukesh also. It's really too close to say who, who's actually going to do it, I think, at this moment in time. Um, uh, so it's going to be fascinating. Yeah, I've got this, as I mentioned in the last stream, this chess boxing fight in just over two months. So trying to stay quite healthy for that, which feels good. So I've basically only having a, a, a beer once a week now and not having too many unless I get led astray, which I'm quite easy at doing. And um, the one thing for me is diet. I, I love eating. I love eating food and it's so hard. I'm a big man, you know, I'm like, uh, and losing weight is, is, oh man, it's so boring, isn't it? Being healthy is so boring. I mean, the fitness thing I do like, and at least like with boxing, you, you, you know, it's it's really exciting sport and good fun. I'm not very good at it, but you know, it's it's fun. But it's the losing weight which is boring and the no drinking. I mean, to live like a monk. I mean, I know you can get a bit of a high, and I, you know, the exercise gives you a high. It's good fun. But in the evenings when you're just chilling out in front of the TV, and you just want a glass of wine, just to get a little bit of a, like, oh hello, hello, that was that's nice. Um, is something I, I have to say I do miss like a bottle of wine shall I say <laughs> um, and, it, and like not having kebabs and pizza which I do still have it's terrible but oh, it's bloody boring being healthy you have to say I don't think it is anyway so um, yeah as soon as, this, as soon as I've done this fight I'm getting a massive pizza and a load of beers in and, a, and you know what I'm looking forward to most do you get? Do you have? Do you know what this is abroad? A full English breakfast. Oh yeah, this is like the perfect English. I mean, I or Scottish or Irish breakfast or Welsh. The Irish breakfast I really like because it has white pudding as well. So sausages, bacon, black pudding, white pudding, fried bread, baked beans, scramble egg, fried egg. It's all fried. Sounds so good. Some um, halloumi. Oh, oh, yeah, why not? Why not? Maybe some toast as well. Yeah. Um, onion. Get some fried onion on there. Mushrooms. Love my mushrooms. Oh, this is all on one plate, by the way. Throw it on the plate. Just put it on there. Tomatoes I don't care for. Too healthy in the morning. Don't want those tomatoes. What's the point having tomatoes on a full English fry breakfast? I've never understood that. You know what role does that tomato play in in on that plate? That tomato is just a loser, in it. It's like oh, I'm a hell. Look, it's trying to pretend that you're eating something healthy. It's like oh yeah, I'll, I'll I'll come to the plate and be a vegetable because I'm healthy. Fuck off, tomato. Get off the plate. What are you doing on my plate? don't want you there um yeah that's that's what i might actually have one of them tomorrow and just sod it it just sounds so good and after you've been drinking beer you cannot be fried up lard it's just amazing okay now we are playing kozhibov who is a bloody strong player and okay let's this guy i lost to a long time ago maybe he's of similar age to me maybe a bit younger actually just trying to think if I played him in a world or, or I'm going to play Jabava London I'm just trying to think if I played him in a junior event some time ago and um, we're playing the Jabava London it's a fairly safe way to start and I don't want to get done in the opening because there's nothing really worse than well, I'm playing H4 because I can there's nothing worse than like not get in a fight against these guys, which I sometimes do. I sometimes realise that I play some stupid moves in the opening. I, you know, let's fight. Let's let's try to play some proper chess. Now, am I taking this one? Am I playing knight here, forcing the exchange? Am I moving my bishop? He's gonna. He can't play there. Let's move, let's just play. Okay. I mean, it's fairly even. I have to look at this setup that my opponents played. 
Is he going to take and go c5? I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. This is like the kind of position you get in the Jabava London. I might castle here. And this h pawn can be used to like attack, right? Knight can come here. Okay, so I, I think I'll castle this way because it's most exciting. My position seems to be a bit easier to play. I might have e4, obviously after I exchange the bishops off. I might... Okay, so he's coming with b5. Might have this move at the right moment. Do we open things up now? I think we should. And I've got to take the bishop off first because my bishop would be hanging otherwise. And let's open the center. Now, if he ever castles, knight g5, some knight to g5 is going to be very scary for him. And I'm also threatening to just take this one. So, can we... Uh, um, now with some attack okay let's do this because if he castles kingside knight f6 queen h7 is checkmate if he ever tries to castle queenside there's this one and i'm setting up ideas and knight takes f7 and boom we're in with the knight sacking and hacking oh, i got a bit excited there and maybe i maybe i need this rook to line up against his king first and this move very interesting. King takes check, king back, knight takes here. I get three pawns, but imagine if I had one more piece looking at his king. So this move, this move is tempting as hell. Especially now he's put his queen here. Okay, I'm gonna move one more piece. And this move I really gonna struggle to resist. There's also queen g3. So I've got to take this now. I mean, there's only so many times a lunatic like me can't sacrifice. Oh, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Why not? His king will probably come to g8. I mean, is it sound? I, I don't know. But he can't take the queen because of knight d6. And now, is there something clever like queen in? Now, this move is this move is annoying, actually. So do I have to take the knight? Queen in, knight here. Rook takes knight here. But then queen b3. Do I just take the knight for now? Mm, okay, let's take the knight. We can come this way. Queen c4, queen in. Now he's got this rook coming here, which is really annoying. Do I have to... No, because then he's got this file. Hmm. Is this not enough, people? Is this not... Is my, am I just, like, done some dodgy-ass sacrifice here? Rook here, double up, doesn't look convincing, I have to say. But okay, let's try to get a, a good hold on this file. Got two pawns, got some initiative. Life ain't completely stinky. And let's try to use all my pieces. If this comes here, I'd love to eventually get my rook to g3. Um... Okay, so we have to play here. This to be expected. And now maybe my knight can come back at the right moment. Ah, he's found a very good idea of coming here, taking here. It's a very good idea. Yeah. That's a very clever way of... Mm, taking the pressure off. Okay, yeah, the sacrifice. I should have just, I just get carried away. But okay, come on, it's still, still game on. It's still some game anyway. Can't take this one because my rook. Get a pawn here. Let's try. Doesn't look like enough now, and here he's going to take it. Not believing this, but his knight is bad, so, you know, 
got the open file. It's still a game of chess. He's coming with a counter attack. He's playing this very well. Quality player. You would expect that. Don't like it. Do not like it. Ah, fuck. My queen is just target. Okay. Check. The queen has to come off here as well, which is grim. Can't allow him to mate me. No, I went to go there. Oh, okay, that, I mean, mouse slipping is ridiculous. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously doing very badly at the end there, but um, had I played rookie seven, it's kind of like game on a little bit. Oh, that, that was disappointing. Just didn't quite get enough of that sacrifice, right? Disappointing. It felt, it felt like, uh, I just, ah, come on, Simon. Let's go to that critical point. So I've got a very nice position here. And I need to play something sensible just like this. Okay, Rook HE1 we did. He played here and now this is just not right. It's just too tempting. He's trying to castle kingside. And what I need to play was this and just try to play some sensible stuff. But the real move I missed, which I was actually thinking about when I put the knight here. So it's funny I didn't play it now was queen here starting to really come in. So I guess this whole sacrifice just didn't work. And what if I had done it now? Would this have been a better way of playing it? I just got too excited by this possibility. And his king goes here. And now this one, is it any better? Probably not enough again, is it? The sacrifice is just not enough. Let's have a look at the way it happened. It's a bit scary for him, but he defended very well. And the, the So I can play rook takes. That changes things a lot. So the point is, I did. I wanted to play rook takes, right? Because my knight is very good here. And I want to just get my pieces lined up and start coming in. And it, I felt that if I could get my rook here, I would be doing well. But the reason I did not play this is because of knight f4. And I was looking at queen here. But there's a better square. I just go here. Ah, shit. And I saw that he couldn't take this. And the reason he can't take this is because combination of these two is too strong and I bring in the third piece and he's losing now there's no way he can stop rook f3 check so ah uh, so I just you know what I was thinking I missed queen e4 which is ridiculous I was only looking at queen b3 here which may also be okay so this is my big mistake so the sacrifice actually seems sound as long as I continue this way and let's just play some moves for the computer let's say let's say go with rook f8 the top choice well, I think it's clear to see that this compensation is quite scary, right? Just because I've got the open file, some pressure. Roughly even. Roughly even, I think, is fair. Knight takes just doesn't feel right because my knight was better here. And these rooks are not working as well. And this is when I started to have doubts. So I do try to get the rooks working a little bit better. But this was a really nice tactic. Otherwise, he's under some pressure, and he's calculated this very well. When you material up, you want to swap pieces. So we're on a three out of five. I'd love to get at least eight points, as I did a couple of weeks ago. Um, I mean, if I can't, I mean, I can still get nine points. I'm going to have to play better, though, aren't I? gonna have to play better than that and we've had uh well we're kind of like coming up to the halfway stage now five rounds of 11 so let's get that roll going again as we've done before and five out of five the normal posse you can have a look of people but are they sacrificing pieces i doubt it and are there any games going on? No. So come on, let's get on with the next game. Computer. There is a game still going on. Really? Let's have a look. This is a, a draw. Should be a draw. But uh, I wouldn't be conf Oh no, it's not a draw. It's winning for black, isn't it? What am I talking about? He builds a bridge. Of course it's winning for black. 
my mistake. And now the king just comes here. Uh, or one of these two squares. We can check it away and now nice technique from the player of the black pieces. I say nice technique, what's he doing? He's coming this way. Come on. Coming this way. He's making he, I'm sure he could have won this easier. He's getting his rook out of the way and now he's gonna go here. Okay. Because he has this check. This is yeah, okay. Got there in the end. Was that nice technique? I don't know. It, 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 I think it was good technique. Right. So let's have a nice win now. Let's go back to this Reti line, the last course that I've done for Chessable, where you play. I'm gonna break it down as come on, why is it cancelling my move? I'm gonna break it down into stages. Stage one is this setup. This is what I call the modern Reti. So I want to get a pawn to e3 and a pawn to c4. Now, when he plays this move, I'm going to play c4. And now I'm going to go back. So this is stage one. Now stage two, I'm going to sort these guys out. And I'm trying to remember the theory again that I've learned in the past. this one okay and I think it's this move which I give in the course but now the bishop comes here and it's very important to fight for this square this is one thing I remember that you, you can often give this bishop up to get this square so I'm just going to control this square with as many pieces as I can because his bishop his light square bishop is not very good because it's trapped behind the pawns right it's a it's a straggler. You know, you, you want this bishop on the other side of the pawns. And now again, I'm still going to try and make sure I get everything controlling this square while I develop. Now, field taking here is fine, but also now he's moved a piece away from the king's side. So I'm going to change plans a little bit. Because this knight was a good defender of his king, I'm going to move the bishop back now to take aim. I'd love to get a pawn to b4. Okay, so he has broken. This is move us maybe underestimated a little bit. Don't really want to get rid of my lovely pawn, but what else can I do? Could take Is there any king side attacks coming on here? Okay, we'll take this. But I don't really don't really want to do that. Going to go here to stop his knight coming in, and now I'm going to go for a typical attack, but this change of structure has helped him because I had a lovely pawn there. So have done it a little bit better but still I feel there is potential to attack okay so he's bringing his knight funnily enough back now to a better defense or maybe maybe centralizing but we're just going to go for checkmate none of this positional stuff that I was trying to do why why why, why was I bothering with that okay so he's going to go g6 and I want this move at some point but this seems like it can't do any harm and let's First of all, make sure all my pieces are optimally placed. And it ain't a game of chess without you, my friend. We need to try and break down this configuration. Do we come in here, weirdly enough? Or this movie's going to take it. Do we come here, then knight comes here. This pawn is weak. Do we even come this way and try to come in? A lot of questions. Bishop here and knight here. Mm, okay, let's try that one. It's interesting. Not sure. Is my bishop. I suddenly realised maybe bishop c8 is a move here. Don't really. Oh, I like that bishop, but I don't really want to lose it. I've got, I've got knight here, then bishop here leads to crazy complications. So, why do I put the knight here? Well, I'm putting the knight here because I, I, you know, I'm just trying to increase some pressure on his structure whilst increasing pressure on his pieces. But without the move h5, it's going to be hard to attack him. So, what do I capture with here? This is kind of very interesting. Now, pawn takes is the risky one. Okay. 
pawn takes his knight hasn't got a very good square. I didn't think this was very good because it's in danger of being lost now to the simple move f3. He's going to come back right now. f3, his knight comes back. That's okay for me. Maybe I should do that first. Cause, let's do it. Because that knight's a little bit annoying. I, it's a bit near my king. Let's force it back. And now I have to maneuver pieces towards his king side. Like knight here and sacrifice on g6 is what I'm considering. Okay, now I don't want to exchange off that bishop as it's the key attacker and it controls this square. So we have to play b3. Now rook here is an interesting option. Maybe my knight then switches to the middle of the board. It's also not bad there. But I really want my knight to sacrifice here. Okay, we're going to have to put it here and play a little bit slower. And he's sacrificed. So he's playing I think he's I think he's playing this really well actually. Bastard. And now he's going to take here. Yeah, this is really good play from him. Ah, should never allowed this sacrifice. My knight going to the middle. Knew this was the wrong plan. Still, still in the game, but I had control and I've I've let that slip now. I prefer my opponent's position actually. Knight on d4 doesn't seem secure. His dark, his bishops are great here. Hmm. Okay, we we'll set up a one mover. Why not? Even Queen C five, yeah, this move is this move is strong. Mm, I don't like what I'm doing here. He's got three pawns now, and his bishops are so good. He played this really well. I played it very badly. This knight is terrible. Let's then he then he's okay. Let's, he's coming here with a bishop anyway, right? Very tricky to play this. Don't like being pinned. Yeah, scary stuff. Trying to defend everything. I can't think in time. Fuck it. Ah, oh, stupid idiot. There was obviously a reason that was not going to work. Ah, depressing. Depressing game, this. Okay, that was depressing. Well played from my opponent, but he just not following instincts is such a bad way to do things. And, um,. This was this was a mistake. This was really st stupid. Here, I should uh, do something else here, right? Uh, and in this position, um, for example, yeah, I mean, allowing him to uh, take on c two, and I'm also getting messages from chess.com, and it, it kind of annoys me when you're doing these like cheat tests and uh, they're saying if you're streaming can you can you I don't know if you're even talking to me or not um, not streaming you know it'd be nice if they could just leave you alone I always moan after after a loss about this I'm not streaming. So, they want the link to where I'm streaming but it's quite clear I'm not streaming Hopefully I won't have to do any more of these soon. I mean, come on, just look at the way I'm playing. Um, yeah, so here, here we played very well because if he does move this bishop back, I don't know, let, let's say here, then he's. I think he's in a lot of trouble after this move because this sacrifice just seems so strong. Such a strong move. Knight takes g6 here. Um, so this was really clever play from him, going rook to c8 um, here. 
because he realizes the position is going downhill. And now I, I think like rook c1 is a better way to do this because, yeah, he still has this exchange sacrifice, but this is a much better version for me because he's not winning this pawn. And after something like rook here, still, still, still I quite like black actually because he's getting rid of the dark square bishop. So very clever play from my, my opponent. Bishop a4, great move. This was a brilliant move from him. Just about keeping the balance when it felt like everything was, uh, everything was in control, basically. Uh, in in the position, but this move this move kept kept those possibilities alive. And if we do a game review, then yeah, I, I think it will get a decent score. But I mean, I, I was doing well out the opening early middle game, but then, as you can see from the graph, it starts to fade away. So we have to win every game now to get eight points. Um, which is tough. Winning every game, not easy. And you can see here, yeah, the, the score kind of gets worse. But as soon as he gets that clever idea in, it's going right. But around about here, yeah, I've just got a very comfortable position. Very comfortable position. But let, let's see. This 92 move, it says it's wrong. Okay, interesting. It felt right to send it. So instead of 92, let's let's see if we can improve and work out what the best move is. So just just before I do this, don't allow this possibility. And I mean, I should be in no position to rush. So this bishop d3 is better because now I keep control. That's a very subtle and clever move, taking away this bishop a4 possibility. Because what can my opponent actually do? this is a winning piece because if he ever comes here with that bishop I take here and obviously things collapse for him this pawn goes or his king goes depending on what he captures with and next move I can now play knight e2 if I want to because he has a bishop a4 I just go rook c1 so this is very clever and my knight can come here again and I think this is what I'm trying to do I'm trying to sacrifice here probably you know with some big attack so a little bit gutted there um, I played brilliant today so we need to improve that uh, oh this game we, we already had a look at didn't we there's one game going on in this round is it the same guy no I don't know what that was all about yeah okay it's the same guy this guy always plays long games this time he's got the queen we saw this be a draw before it should be winning, but it's not actually that easy to win. You need to get black in Zugzwang. And I think this is a clever way of doing it. Because now black is in serious trouble. The king should be able to get into b3 now at some point. Ooh. Stalemate ideas. Okay. The king coming here is the way to win. Surely at the right moment. Still, I wonder how many moves they played. Can he get the draw? This seems to be the ending ending theme, doesn't it, this? Anyone? Yeah, it's so hard to defend that ending. So we've got five rounds to go, and if I've got any chance of getting eight points, I need to start playing a lot better. So I need to get five out of five now. So uh, anyone believe me? Anyone, is there any believers out there? Hopefully there's some believers out there. Let's see if I can just sort my act out and start playing some better chess. I need to. So I feel like, I feel quite focused, but things just not quite clicking. So I played, I've played the black line, I think nearly every round. So let's, let's do it again. Score two out of two so far. This is quite a good setup with this, but this one I'm quite happy with because this bishop not great. And of course we're going to play h5 just to make it a little bit complex. And if you can play b5, then I think you generally should play b5. Try to play b4 here. Got to get my rook out of the line to do that. I could play b4, but maybe no reason to rush this. Now, I, 
This is going to be another rather positional game, I'm afraid. Just the nature of the beast. Okay, he could have swapped queens, but he decided to hold off on that. Now, it probably makes sense for me to swap queens. And play this. So he doesn't have a4 for his knight now. So his knight has to come a little bit uncomfortable. Now, this is a key rerouting idea, which I think I talked about in the last... Uh, game and sorry I'm just concentrating because I really don't want to fuck this up where does my knight go probably this way I do like my dark square bishop okay so he's stopping that plan for now now my knight looks a bit silly doesn't it okay let's come in with a bishop and Let's use these bishops as much as can be. He's coming here. And my bishop doesn't look great, does it? Uh, my bishop doesn't look great. Very quick, this guy as well, isn't he? He's a super speedy, speedy player. Okay, if you ever see a square for your knights, then think about jumping in. Now, this may be a threat now with some f4 idea, so he's got to do this. So I'm going to take with a pawn, so I don't want his knight coming to e4, so I want to cover that square. I could go here, and then am I worried? No, okay, I think I think this is a nice diagonal for the bishop, so we will allow that. It's only a pawn. We can go pawn down if we have enough compensation. So do we have enough compensation here? How do we get the rooks working? This move seems to be... Okay, let's get this rook in the game. So I want to get this one here and the other one here, yeah? Maybe some pressure against this with the idea of coming in with a bishop to e4. Okay, so if I take on pass on, plays these moves very confidently, very quickly, but I quite like my position. Now, bishop e4 is a good move, but on pass on, takes, takes, knight takes, bishop d2, or rook. Okay, his king's so weak there. Let's go for this because I can take the knight. And then this one. I need to get my rook to the seventh rank. So take. Okay, let's go here. I've got to put his knights on a bad square. I can hear Charlie getting up now. Tactics. He's just holding his position together with tactics, isn't he? Takes, takes, I get my pawn back, but it's not inspiring. I take here, he takes here, there's nothing, that's a clever move. Okay, so I think we're going to have to do this, but this is not, again, that inspiring. So we get our pawn back, but... Probably even. Uh, that's most likely my car getting stolen outside as well, that alarm. Yeah, well, this is this is a uh, must be even. I mean, if he ever gets his knight to f6, I'm going to be worse. So I have to watch this square. Uh, the only f hope I got, I think, is trying to probe his pieces. So he is trying to get his knight somewhere. I'm not sure where his knight is going this way. Okay, I don't think I'm getting mated. I could be wrong. And he's playing this. He's playing maybe playing this a little bit too aggressively. Where is the mate? Why? Where? What's he trying to do here? And now I, I'm probably picking up a pawn. But he's very tricky, isn't he? Tricky guy. Fuck. Tricked me. He's tricked me. The bastard has tricked me. Ah, he's tricked me good there. 
This looks a bit suspicious somehow. He's a trickster, but he, he's, he's in trouble now. He's losing it, all his pawns. And the bishop does a great job of controlling his knight. You see how my bishop dominates that knight. trying to do this in the cleverest way I can with seven seconds oops oh don't mouse slip now Should be easy, but me, okay. Oh, that was a. See, this is this is the thing today. Everything is a blood. It's one of those days where everything is just a challenge, right? Um, and, and he and he he had some, he had some good ideas there at some points, but he he was really just like relying on tricks too much. And um, I started to play some quite bad moves there in time trouble. And around about here, when he gets his pawn here, well, the computer still thinks I'm doing right, but. It's this move which he can do to draw, but he's not really interested in a draw. And I, I think the key thing, key thing for me to play is here. Where do you put the bishop, right? Because if I allow his knight out, I could be losing. So, like something like here may seem quite safe, but after the knight comes out, like to one of these two squares, yeah, okay, computer says I'm winning, but practically it can go wrong. Or let's say this way, the much safer way to play is um, uh, still getting fucking messages from these people screen you can need please reshare look if you oh man can you not do it when I'm playing please so now I have to share my screen all right uh, okay why Okay. Oh no, no, what's happening? Sorry, it's quite confusing when you're playing chess, trying to commentate, and uh, and have I just messed up the stream? No, I don't want the plug in the store. See, it just froze me a little bit when all these things are going on. Uh, so <laughs> it's hard enough playing chess. It's hard enough commentating chess. Is, and, and I'm moaning again. I didn't even lose that game. Wow. What, what about that? that? That's unique. But one of them, you know, there's certain patterns in chess that you, you really should understand. And, and one of those patterns is the bishop um, basically getting a fortress around. Um, I'm getting my CBD drink in now. Apparently, this is the strongest CBD drink you can get, but it ain't strong enough, I tell you. I need, I need the real deal. I need the real deal. And uh, that bishop, like, pyramiding Eiffel towering the knight is the way to go okay so I need to win every game otherwise I'm not going to be happy and let's go for e4 and let's go for a king's gambit come on and he's gone straight in with this move fair enough and we're going to bring the knight out now f5 I know is a move and I don't I think f5 is actually a pretty good move a move with Tony Miles in I don't really know the best response to that uh, but if he doesn't play f5 then it should be quite quite all right. Now this one probably going to happen. This is a standard king's gambit position. So let's just rock and roll with d4. And now I can get my pawn back. And as soon as you get your pawn back, you should be better because of your nice center. 
Now I suppose this is worth stopping. And I just want to play around the center, develop my pieces, use my extra space. And then at some point, I should certainly not be in a rush to do this, maybe break and release the demons of hell. In the meantime, I obviously missed that you can check me over here. But it's only a check. You, you always move your king in the king's gambit, so we just have to do that. Okay, so he's won my bishop, but I would rather have not allowed him to make exchanges. But again, you can't have everything in life. And maybe I, I can even go here. I've got to watch out for knight takes d4. Knight takes d4 and bishop there. Don't want to drop this one. So let's just defend that center. But really, all in all, you should be better in these positions because of your center. Now, do I? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go queen side because I think, as long as I got this one covered, which I hope I do. Knight takes. I can now take this one. I'll get the king on b1 next move. It gives me more chance to pawn storm over here with my pawns. So, I'm gonna try to go king b1 and just storm the pawns. Oh, that's how we do that next a bit more space it's always easier to play when you've got a bit more space but i need to win every game now so what's his idea there anything going on there don't think so so let's just get the king out of any problems that might occur with bishop g bishop g5 aha so this was his idea which i just kind of walked into he wants to win the bishop pair Okay, and do I, do I mind taking with a pawn? I don't think so. And we've seen that I've done all right with the knights so far. So I'm, I'm going to continue my strategy of playing with the knights. And when you've got extra space, playing with the knights can be pretty good. There is a threat. G5, winning a piece. Double pawns in the center, often good, because they control more central squares and they're like wigwamming up the board. And he's making his bishop a very nice square there, sensibly. Now, knight here goes c6. Not really a big threat. So, of course, we're going to try to open up that area of the board. Now, knight here becomes a lot more tempting. Bishop here, though. So, I think still, knight here, bishop here stops it. I think still we keep motoring up the ball with our pawns. Now it's very hard to checkmate when they've got a bishop here, but I'm going to give it a damn good go. Um, but we have to try and control as much of the board as possible while we're going. He never wants to get rid of this bishop. This bishop is just a monster piece. Now I might have some funny ideas like knight f5, throwing it in. Knight f5 now even. Okay, can I can I resist that move? I'm doing it again, aren't I? I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a crazy move just because, just because I can. Okay, come on, in we go. Knight f5. Love to get rid of this bishop, and obviously if he takes, my pawn is coming up to f6. Now I think bishop takes, and maybe swapping queens is the one idea I'm, I was worried about here. I was hoping he wouldn't see that, to be honest. But I, I was figuring I, I should have a solution there. Just haven't worked out what it is. Maybe my knight comes over to a, a, h4. Because then if he takes, I'm guarding the pawn there. So I'm thinking bishop takes, bishop takes. He should swap queens off here. Rook takes, so then knight h4. Uh, because now this one maybe a bit similar. He would love to swap queens here. Which he's trying to do. And I don't really want to because... Still attempting to attack him, but if I do swap queens, I want my knight to get to a good square. So shall we put the knight over here? Is everything covered? I think so. So let's get the knight over here. At least now if the queen's come off, I'm still attacking. So he's come in and fuck. He's threatening checkmate. I say fuck because that actually took me a little bit by surprise. Ooh, okay. A little bit scary. So I've got to block his bishop off. Scary move there. 
and I want a very interesting position because I'm getting ready to play these, but he, he might better get some action now with like... Okay, he's not threatening to come in here, so it gives me a bit more time. Now, does g6 do anything? Is there any threats? He's got queen e4. Swapping queens, but... Okay, let's go for this. Maybe he needs to swap queens. Was h6 was also interesting. Okay, he swapped queen. That's disappointing. Disappointing. Okay, here... I've got this one as an idea. Maybe he comes here. Okay, this is a very passive move from my opponent, which I'm happy to see. Rook here, line up. Do I take something? Which rook? Which rook? I don't know. Uh, ah, maybe the other one. Ah, oh, this should be good now, surely. The pressure here is immense. Yeah, this is... Put, this, put that in your pipe and smoke it, son. And as long as I don't blunder. I mean, I, I can't even do anything there except take it. We're still maybe on course to get to 8 out of 8. And that was quite interesting. I think I was always... Okay, interesting King's Gambit. I've got quite a good opening from the King's Gambit there. And um, let's have a little look at the game review, see see what the game review says. Well, there was a bit, there was a win there, wow. So he had an opportunity there at one point, which he didn't take. Um, but apart from this one opportunity, it looked like a smooth game. So Knight here was a blunder. <laughs> wow. This is just typical, yeah? I thought I played a nice move, but it's actually a blunder. See, I'm not quite on form. Can you guys at home do better than me? Why was this a blunder then? Why? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just a patser, man. I don't bloody know. Let's have a look. Let's go. I'm going to go to this screen because in case another game starts, we, we know what's going on. Uh, and after knight f5, okay, so the computer thinks he can take, take, and calmly go here. Now, my assumption, and I can see immediately where I'm wrong, because he's combining these queen e3 ideas, but with an extra piece. My assumption was that f6 would be quite annoying in these positions, but I'm forgetting about queen e3. And queen e3 here looks like a killer. Uh, I mean, on the surface... My attack looks fantastic, and I, I again, I'm quite lazy in my calculations sometimes. I just make assumptions, and we know that they are the mother of all fuck-ups. And this move, well, my queen is loose, and here he's going to win more material. So actually, my play was quite okay until I went a little bit mental with this move. I should have just kept attacking by opening up the Harry file here. Um... So, yeah. And anyway, as the game developed, he fights back. But this move doesn't really do anything. I try to launch an attack. He goes for the safe option, which I was worried about. But knight f5, great square for my knight. You can sort of see the way I play chess. I don't always play great chess, but I'm always, and this is a bit of advice for you, trying to find the best potential for my pieces. And all you've got to do in chess, really simple, you've got to put your pieces on the best squares and then, and then everything falls into place. Put your pawns on the best structure, put your pieces on the best squares, tactics will work for you, everything falls into place and it works like clockwork. The problem with that concept is timing, as in life. This is why chess is such a beautiful mirror of life and you're mirroring possibilities in life aren't you by your timing and life can be you can do a nice idea but it can be completely off and it can cause you a lot of problems and in chess this idea is a very nice idea but you've got to time it correctly and that depends on the urgency of the position so really chess is about putting your pieces putting your pawns on the best structures putting your piece on the best squares 
when the timing is right while stopping your opponent doing the same and that's really what the struggle is and then tactics will work for you and everything works all right simple simple game really I mean if it wasn't a simple game I, I would better play it and we have now a look at the results because uh, we are we've got three rounds left if we get three points we can get to eight again and this is like my new benchmark if I get to eight points then I will be happy do you have to be a bit of a jobs worth to be like you know like uh, a, the, to join the cheap police I mean is that I mean to be a cheap police I mean there are probably loads of people who, who love being a cheap police right they're like um, what's going on here toolbar I don't want toolbar what, what is happening now Jesus Christ I don't know what this is I don't even know what this is okay um, it's like traffic wardens right I mean who wants to who, who in life kind of like grows up wanting to be a traffic warden i mean i understand people need to have jobs and that's that's absolutely fine but who who whose role in life is to be a traffic warden oh when i'm you know you're in class when you're six years old and like it goes around the class well, so fred what do you want to be when you're older i want to be an astronaut i want to go and see space explore the galaxy and find new life in the world oh that's really nice fred why don't you go and do that son Okay, let's go over to Barry. Barry, what do you want to be when you're older? I want to be a football player, miss, because when I'm a football player, I can make millions of pounds. I could feed my whole family. Okay, Barry, that's that's nice. I'm glad. You go and kick the football. Go on, shoo, shoo. Make your millions. Okay, over, over to you, Derek. What would you like to be? I want to be a traffic warden. And if I can't be a traffic warden, I want to be cheat detection on chess.com. Yeah, baby. So, why do you want to do that? Why do you want to be a traffic warden? Well, whenever someone goes a little bit over the speed limit, I can give them a ticket. Or, if they park their car on the wrong side of the line, I can tell them off and give them a ticket. And if that doesn't work, if someone cheats on chess.com, I can give them a ticket. And I, you know, I, can, I love my tickets. Tickets, tickets, tickets. Okay, it's not after you shoot your um, so okay, it's I, I'm quite tempted to share. It's not after you shared your screen again, your front cam is not available on the screen share. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Okay, fuck off, man. You know, just like you know, honestly. Okay. Uh, let's try again. I mean, obviously, I know this is all my fault. Okay. Probably sharing the wrong screen. What about now? What about now? Okay, hopefully, they can see it now. I'm still getting messages that my setup is wrong, but, uh, you know. If you don't don't approve it at the start then please yeah okay good and of course i'm being harsh just because uh, i'm rattled and i'm not having a very good time tuesday and i'm being really nasty and i don't mean it i'm just like yeah i mean okay actually i, I feel really guilty now because i've got a message back now saying thanks a lot that's fine all good and i'm like oh no why, why did i just do that rant and hello charlie the cat is up. i'm just gonna see the cat now i'll probably get in trouble for seeing the cat now oh oh it's my move uh, so, oh, there's another game going on. Okay, we need to win the next three. So I apologise. I'm just going on a little rant because I could, basically. There was no other reason. Hello, Charlie. Charlie. Charlie, hello. He's a good boy. Come here. What's up? What's up? Hello. Are you all right? Are you all right? What do you want me to play here? He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Do you want me to play the Dutch? Okay, look, if you're me and if you're stressed out, then I'm going to have to, we're going to have to sacrifice my three out of three, aren't we? What would you play? Would you play that? Good boy. Okay, I'm going to put you down now. Are you all right? I'll take you outside soon, okay? Come on. Come on. Come on. Right, 
So uh, that, that's my very old. That's my very old. Uh, my very old cat who is twenty and goes a bit senile. So he basically gets like twenty-four hour care. The cat and um, like uh, you know, because we love him. He's part of the family. So uh, he like rules it. So if he's not happy, me playing Title Tuesday, I'm gonna have to do a runner and let him out. But um, he'll get a nice walk at the end. Don't you worry. And lots of treats and lots of nice times. But let's go back to the game. So, um, the Dutch again, I'm thankful about, and the whole point of the Dutch is to play e5. You want to try to get this move in so that uh, you can break in the center. And one of the good things about having the pawn here is that if this move's played, you're now supporting the knight. And this is really important because in this position, if my knight wasn't supported, I'd have to move the knight. But now that my knight's supported, I can play this move and I get my ideal situation in and this is already a nice position for black because you should notice by now these two pawns are very very useful and I'm gonna just try to checkmate with my normal plan which is f4 get the bishop to h3 knight g4 and I still feel really guilty about the chess.com cheats and I, I all I can say is sorry guys I love you really I was just I was just thrown you fucking chess.com cheats look what you made me do this is sorry Charlie um oh no I've just blundered and it's and it's obviously nothing to do with me it's to do with the chess.com cheats okay and that was just silly well at least it mean I can get the hell out of here today oh that was really annoying I just fell into this cheapo I should have moved my king out of the way first and uh, cheat detections I mean bloody cheat detections put me off my game love you really they're doing a great job we don't want cheats on chess.com hopefully they'll pick on someone else next week this is going to be the weekly dilemma isn't it <laughs> oh my god okay well i've lost the pawn but very slack of me but i still got my queen in an aggressive place near the king i still got a potential knight coming in and i still got some activity it's not enough for the pawn because it's not just a pawn that i've lost you're right charlie it's a really important pawn that I've lost there. And now uh, I'll come, I'll come and let you out soon, okay? Good boy. And um, because uh, that pawn is a real good basis for your attack. It supports this one, it supports this one, but hey ho, on we go. So uh, what's next? Now I'm gonna just play this because I, I the good thing about losing stuff is that you, you, you you lose responsibilities and uh, the good thing about losing responsibilities is you can free flow freestyle and I'm kind of freestyling now and I'm just going for the king my opponent has a lot of pieces over here I'm not going to count pieces because the start as, I, as soon as I start doing that I'll start freaking out I'm going for mate now we could take this one back which we'll probably do we have to do and I want two more moves bishop here get rid of the final defender and then knight g4. So I want bishop here and knight g4. Okay, we don't really care about that pawn, so who cares? Let's bring the bishop in, try to get rid of the final defender. If I'd have brought the knight in first, then h3 is a known defense. My opponent takes there. I don't care. I'm going in with knight g4. And against this move, we are... This one could be... A decent idea but let's let's get the knight into g4 and i'm now thinking of ideas like bishop g2 queen takes h2 put that in your bloody pipe and smoke it that's a crack pipe move that's not even a tobacco pipe that is literally that is that is like you know that's maybe a mescaline a mescaline move that's a, oh 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 can the mescaline move work i remember trying that stuff once <sighs> It was a wild, wild time. In another life. I don't recommend it. Bishop here. Uh, and I just lose. Okay. Uh, yeah, this attack is probably just suspect as hell. Um, what attack? Am I, am I even attacking here? I need this bishop to get out of the bloody way. Bishop here. Bishop here, 
taking here any of this and is any of this okay what about i go here with this one yeah that wasn't the bishop g that that was literally not 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 working so i'm just trying to get now some tactic rook takes here going and now at least my knight can move again i'm not really believing this but my opponent going for this one oh, shit time time is ticking 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 oh, i don't know oh yeah, this is not working. We just throw him in now. But it's a very short time. Uh, am I not? Am I got no threats here at all? Nothing. This one. I'll go here anyway. Oh shit, my bishop. Ah, uh, falling apart here, boys and girls. Falling apart. Well, this looks like the end. Our only friend, the end. One little pump. And um, not the best title Tuesday, but at least I can go and enjoy the weather now. I don't have to do the cheat detection anymore. And um, I can uh, take the cat out, which is definitely priorities um, uh, for the day. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, okay. Uh. And I will hope to see you again soon. Uh, cheers. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe. We'll be better next time. I promise you. Bye for now.